Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Monica Kraft. I'm from the University of Arizona Health Sciences Center, specifically the College of Medicine in Tucson, Arizona. And today we're going to talk about the new concepts in pathobiology of asthma and how that is leading us to targeted therapies. In order to really understand a patient's asthma and therefore really be very personalized about therapy, the field has moved to this concept of asthma phenotypes and endotypes. And so a phenotype is a clinical characteristic based upon a patient's genetics as well as environmental exposures. And it really is a collection of clinical characteristics, as you'll see. And each phenotype is driven by a specific mechanism, or sometimes more than one, that we call an endotype. And it's a well-characterized molecular mechanism. And some examples would be a T2 endotype, which is really composed of specific cytokines that patients' cellular inflammation creates. In this case, it's interleukin-4, 5, and 13 as examples. And those are the dominant cytokines and inflammatory pathway in about 70% of patients with asthma. There are also different cells that produce these cytokines, including T helper 2 cells, innate lymphoid cells, and mast cells. And that type 2 or T2 gene expression also correlates with worsening asthma control. So that's an example of an endotype that creates a certain phenotype or kind of asthma. But we know that asthma is more than that. It's really a spectrum of inflammation. There's a lot of heterogeneity. There are lots of different kinds of asthma. And so our charge when we take care of these patients is to sort that out as best we can in the clinical arena. And the good news is we have some very nice tools available to us that can target specific pathways. And so I think the field is really advanced in an exciting way, and I think it's a great time to be involved in the care of patients with asthma. There could be a reflection on when the asthma began, early in life, late in life, lung function is important, symptoms, the pattern of exacerbations, and the kind of inflammatory phenotype, whether it's this type 2 asthma or non-type 2 asthma, which tends to be associated much less often with eosinophils. And driving this are multiple different mechanisms or endotypes. And the next slide really shows examples of these endotypes and what sort of phenotypes they drive. So, for instance, this early onset allergic asthma, which is a type of asthma we may be very familiar with, also is associated with a history of atopic dermatitis, allergic rhinitis, and may have chronic rhinosinusitis. And this can be associated with variable eosinophilia. And so that's one endotype. Another one is a kind of an asthma that's late onset as an adult and is less associated with allergy and often develops in the setting of chronic rhinosinusitis with nasal polyps. There may be an association with aspirin exacerbated respiratory disease. And this can be a very labile, uh, severe asthma reflected by a significant airflow limitation. And that type of asthma is often associated with significant eosinophilia. Leukotrienes are important and especially in an aspirin-exacerbated respiratory disease. And then we have the other side, which is the non-type 2, which really isn't associated so much with eosinophils. And some clinical characteristics we think about are also late onset. There could be an obesity-related association, generally not allergic. And in general, there can be relatively normal bronchial hyperresponsiveness with minimal or no allergic comorbidities but it often is poorly characterized. And this is, in my opinion, really represents an unmet need. And there may be a significant association with lower respiratory tract infection, reflux, exposures, environmental exposures, for instance. So this type of asthma we know less about uh, compared to the type two. And thankfully, there's a lot of very active research going on in both arenas to help us understand this better. Thank you very much for your attention. And now I invite you to participate in the next portion of this educational session.